So you see here, this is the bottom of my sweater and I have this really pretty Paco edge detailing. Now, because this is a folded over hem, you can see here how it's folded over and attached in the back. So I use the provisional cast on method to do that because it just really finishes off this Paco edge detailing and makes it look really nice and neat and, and um, professional. So let me show you how to do that. Now there are different ways to do the provisional cast on, but for me, what I find the easiest is using a crochet method. Now, if you are not comfortable with crochet, then what you can do is you can Google or look up some different methods for do the, doing the provisional cast on to find a method that suits you. But the results are going to be the same. So if you are okay with doing crochet, then you're going to start off by crocheting a number of chains. So the pattern's going to tell you how many stitches you're going to need to cast on. You're going to chain the amount of stitches needed for the cast on plus a few extra. I like to do between four and five extra stitches just to make sure that we have enough. Use a hook that is a similar size to the needles that you're going to be using for the sweater. So the pattern calls for a 3.75 millimeter needle. So that's what I used for my sample. And I'm using a four millimeter crochet hook. So it's close enough in size to the needles that I used for the pattern. This is the, what the front of our chain row looks like and this is what the back looks like. We're going to be working into each of these bumps. See these bumps here? So we're going to take our working yarn, the yarn that the pattern calls for, and for each of these bumps, we're going to pick up a stitch using our main yarn. Once you've done making your chain row, okay, fasten it off, and then put a knot in the end of the tail that you ended with. This is going to help you later because what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to unravel this crochet provisional cast on because we don't want this as part of our work. We're going to take it off and unravel it. So when we just tie a knot on the tail end that we finished with, it'll help us to identify what end of our crochet chain to start with so that we can unravel it successfully. So we have our main yarn and we have our knitting needle. I'm using a circular needle here because that's pretty much all that I use. Uh, you could use straight needles if that's what you have. So we've just turned our chain to the back to where all those bumps are and skip the first couple of, of uh, bumps just to so that you can really find the stitch a lot easier. And just insert your needle insert your needle into that and then we're going to just start picking up the stitches with our main yarn. If you wish, you could use a crochet hook. That might be easier for you. And we're going to work into each of those bumps. You 
each of these bumps that we're working into is going to count as one cast on stitch. Okay, can you see what we've got here so far? So this here is our crochet chain on the bottom and we're just picking up with our main yarn one stitch into each of those bumps in the back of the crochet chain. So here are a few tips. Make sure that you use a yarn for your provisional cast on. Make sure that you use a yarn that is similar in weight to the main yarn that you're going to be using for your project. So the yarn I've, I'm using is a DK weight yarn and I believe what I'm using for my cast on is a sport, a heavy sport weight yarn. So that's quite similar. Another tip is to make sure that the yarn that you use is nice and smooth. The reason for that is because you're going to be unraveling or unzipping this, cap, this uh, provisional cast on later on and getting rid of it. So you wanna make sure that you can pull it out easily. So don't use a yarn that's really sticky or really fuzzy like a mohair to do your provisional cast on because it'll be a nightmare to undo it. Along with that, try not to split the yarn as you're casting on, like try not to put your needle in and split through. Make sure to go cleanly into each of those chain stitches without splitting the yarn because then again it'll be very difficult to unravel and you're probably going to have to take out your scissors to cut some of these stitches to get them to unravel properly. So again now that I have all of my cast on, the number of cast on stitches for my project, I'm going to turn my work and just continue it just continue in pattern as the instructions tell me to do. So this first row of stitches in my main yarn is going to count as row one and the pattern will tell you that. So I'm going to continue working in pattern and when I get to the point where we're going to be ready to unzip or unravel this cast on this provisional cast on edge I'll come back and show you how to do that so this Bicot edge has been completed and now it's time to unzip this pro provisional cast on so I'm just going to go ahead and do that and hope for the best. So remember how we tied a knot in the end tail of our provisional cast on so that we can identify which edge or which end to unravel. So again, that's just a tip to help you remember because if you try unraveling from this end, it won't happen. And hopefully once that's done, everything else will unravel easy peasy. We'll see. Okay, not bad. 
you can see as I do that. Now here it looks like I made a little bit of a mistake. So I probably picked up, you can see here how that's not unraveling. Probably what I did was when I was picking up the pearl or the bumps in the back of my chain, I probably picked up, I probably did, I probably picked up the chain instead of the back of the chain. So it probably twisted in my hand and I didn't notice that. So I'm just going to cut my yarn here so I can continue to unravel easily. And you know what? These things are going to happen. It's not a big deal as long as you can recognize that. And that's why you're going to have your scissors handy. But if you do everything correctly, it should unzip nice and easily. And then you can see how making sure that you have yarn that's smooth. I probably could have used a better yarn because you can see how the stitches are kind of grabbing onto the live stitches that I want to keep. So it's not unzipping as smoothly as it could. So I probably could have used a better choice of yarn, but at least you get the idea of what's supposed to happen here. You can see that coming undone. Okay, and it leaves you with these live stitches. Now what you're going to do is grab your other needle and start slipping them onto another needle. So you see the beauty of this provisional cast on, even though it is a bit finicky, it takes a little extra time. If you are working on a project where you, you know, you cast on and you knit up, you know, from bottom to top, you might want to say, add a decorative edge or you know, be able to pick up stitches and work in a different direction. So you can see how this provisional cast on is very useful because now those stitches are live. I can pick them up. I can start knitting in the opposite way. And there's no visible line or it's not obvious where those stitches were picked up. So it just really makes a nice, seamless, finished, uh, just a nice looking transition. So a provisional cast on definitely does have its uses and it is a valuable tool to add to your knitting repertoire. But yes, it does take a little bit of extra time and effort. So now what I can do is just fold this, just folding this Paco hem in half, making sure that the right sides or are on the outside. Look at how nice that looks. Instead of knitting this whole hem and then having to sew it or tack it in place after the fact, because of that provisional cast on, I can just fold it in half, fold both pieces together, 
and then I can just knit. For example, I can just knit the stitches together to uh, fasten them. So I would take the one stitch from the front needle, one stitch from the back needle, just placed, just place my knit needle in there as if I was going to knit those together. And then from here you would just continue up with the rest of your sweater following the pattern or whatever instructions the pattern gives you. And there you have it. So that's how you do the provisional cast on. And I hope that you will try it in one of your projects.